just clap for me? Just... At the start of 2023, I set a goal for myself to create one short film a month. After all, it's good practice, and I have a lot of ideas that I want to put to good use. Originally, a different short film that I've been working on, titled The Foxhole, was planned to be the January short. However, I couldn't get it done in time and pushed it back to February 10th. For a few months, Layla and I had been working on various ideas for different horror shorts, many of which will very likely see the light of day by the end of the year. One of these ideas involved a doppelganger of herself tormenting her. I found this Instagram reel that had a similar setup, and I really wanted to try and expand on the general mood and atmosphere. Filming for Doppelganger was supposed to begin and end on Thursday, January 12th. Time was of the essence, as I was planning on having this finished and released by the 20th. It took only an hour to film everything. I used my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K to film the short. For what limited sound we recorded on set, I used my trusty Zoom H4n. Projects like these that involve limited to no dialogue are really easy to edit together, as most of the sound work is just foley. We don't need to worry about dubbing wild lines or making sure that the dialogue sounds perfect. However, that doesn't mean this movie didn't have its problems during production. While the kitchen scene looked great due to the abundance of natural lighting, the nighttime stuff that we shot was really grainy and looked terrible. I chose not to bring my aperture lights as I felt it would be unnecessary. Unfortunately, I did not heed the words of Adam Sandler's character Jill from Jack and Jill. Mom always said it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Oh yeah, she did say that. I remember that. That was cool. Are you going bald? Huh? As a result, we needed to reshoot that half of the short. Both of our schedules were insanely busy, but we managed to find the time to shoot on Wednesday, January 18th two days before the deadline. The ending was a big question mark. Originally, I was going to have Layla slowly lower the blanket where she would see this messed up final form of the doppelganger. I realized though that this would be extremely difficult to do in post, and ultimately it didn't work. I tried Photoshop, and she even wore this funny Halloween mask, and it just, it didn't work. Another version of the ending we shot was the doppelganger on top of Layla. However, that effect also looked really off and janky. I ended up deciding on just making the ending more ambiguous, with the idea being that the sounds the doppelganger is making is it transforming into its final form. Either way, I managed to get everything edited and ready to go before the deadline. Taking a look at the actual short now, a big emphasis here was on atmosphere and a psychological side to the horror. I really wanted to have a constant feeling of dread throughout. Utilizing a low rumble sound in the background really helped establish that mood. I normally go out of my way to record my own Foley sounds, but due to the fast-paced nature of the production, I resorted to using sound effects from the YouTube audio library. I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised by the quality of these sounds. I would highly recommend it for any filmmakers needing a quick fix if they're missing any sound cues in their projects. It's also a huge bonus that all the sounds are all free to use and don't require any payment or royalties. When designing the look of the doppelganger, I had a few key points of inspiration. For starters, the work of Trevor Henderson played a big part in getting the general look down. Funnily enough, a day after I posted a promo picture of the doppelganger's look, he also posted this really awesome painting that strangely resembled my creation. There's no way he ripped me off. I'm a nobody from Wisconsin. I just thought this was fun to point out. Junji Ito's The Neighbor's Window was a big point of influence for the shot of the doppelganger peering through the window. J-horror films like Ringu and Juwan played a big part as well, especially the shot of the doppelganger staring at Layla from the foot of the bed. To get the look of the doppelganger, I took a still frame from the shot and then ran it through Photoshop. From there, I used a smudge tool and the paintbrush tool to distort Layla's face into something that looked uncanny, but not too inhuman. I went through a few designs before finally settling on the one I liked the most. I made the right eye completely black and hollow, added some yellow to the left eye and made it larger. I also messed with the nose and made her only have four front teeth that were then turned a light shade of yellow. Despite its rushed nature, this is still a project that I'm very proud of. I definitely want to make more horror shorts in the coming months and will continue to make one short a month. I'm Cole McCormick, you're watching Firewood Media.